Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, Shavua Tov. Uh, as always, we'll begin with the Dvar Torah and then uh, go into uh, continue Hechel Shabbos. Um, actually, it wasn't a simple week last week uh, for uh, at least for the religious community. Uh, especially the Haredi one, but uh, in general, um, with this author of many, many books, uh, very was considered to be a huge educator, <coughs> mainly in the Haredi world, but all the Datik, Lumi kids, and adults also used to read his books. And uh, turns out that. Uh, uh, there was a lot of monkey business, to say the least, going on uh, with this person. Um, so before uh, before I say a few words about that, uh, we'll start with the Dvar Torah just to make it uh, uh, based on a holy and holy words. Um, the parsha we just read, Parsha Zvaira, uh, yesterday. Uh, begins the exodus from Egypt, begins the 10 plagues. We have seven out of the 10 plagues uh, that Hashem brought upon the Egyptians uh, to break them down, and, and uh, especially Paro, to show him who's really in control of everything. It repeatedly says in the, in the Parsha Leman Teda, Yadu Mitzrayim, it's all for, to them, for them to acknowledge who really is the boss. In the world, unlike the Aftarah, which we read from Yechezkel, which says that uh, Paro used to say, Ani yori v'ani asitini. I am the Nile, and I created myself. Meaning, uh, he's the God. Uh, the Nile in, the, in those days in Egypt was the uh, most important, uh, mm -hmm. essential part of the land because it gave all the water. Till today. Uh, there isn't much rain in Egypt, very dry country. They need the water from the, from the Nile to, to, to sustain life. So if he says that he created himself and, this, and the Nile, that he, he is the authority, the, the, the creator, that's something that uh, it's like saying I'm the God, uh, which he thought he was. And Hashem showed him who really is. Anyhow, something very, very beautiful that the Sfasem uh, uh, explains and discusses is the fact that what is true kavod, pride, respect, what is the true meaning of kavod? So we find in the Pasuk of Tehillim, we say it repeatedly every week, several times, we say, Mi melech kavod what does that mean? The king of glory, Melech Kavod, king of pride, of, of uh, uh, respect, of honor. So says the Sfasem, it's unlike what we would think, Pshat, that it means that we glorify Hashem and, uh, and we make Hashem the, the, the uh, the, 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 the number one, the top of the top of everything, meaning the melech that receives kavod. That's how we would perceive it uh, by pshat, melech ha kavod. The king receives kavod from everyone. Svasema says it's the, exact, it's the exact opposite. Melech ha kavod means he's king, he rules over kavod, meaning he doesn't need it. When you say someone is a Baal Tzedakah, what does that mean? It's, it doesn't receive Tzedakah. He gives away Tzedakah. The Baal Tzedakah, he's, he's in charge. He's on top of Tzedakah that he's able to give out to others. So Melech Kavod is that he reigns over Kavod. He doesn't need it. It's not necessary for him to receive Kavod. He controls Kavod. Not arrogant, chas v'chayla, the opposite. And then, says the main 
feature of a person who owns something, whereas a Baal Davar is a king of, the main feature is that he can give it away. He doesn't need to keep it for himself. He's not afraid of losing it because he's the king of it, controls it. So he says, that's the pshat. When Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu, you, Moshe Rabbeinu, will rule over Paro. You'll instruct Paro what to do. Whatever I speak to you, you say over to, you tell over to Paro, and you, you, you can control him. So it's a little awkward. Hashem is, is the Lord. Is the Elohim. How can you give it over to Moshe? The answer is because he's Melech HaKavod. Because he's, he controls Kavod. He doesn't need it for himself. He can distribute it. Give it out. Here, you take a piece. You take a piece. Because he's so sure of himself. He doesn't need the pride to come to him only. Um, Sometimes, uh, so this I heard from Rav Lior Engelman, an example of people who aren't melech kavod, rather controlled by kavod. They look, they look for pride. So sometimes they say, it would seem, again, as if Hashem was acting the same way, but it's definitely not. Some people say to their friend, uh, you need a, your car fixed, I'll send you to a certain uh, car mechanic, a musachnik, uh, tell him I sent you. Give you a good price. Now, sometimes that's something very innocent. Tell him I sent you is because he knows me. And uh, knowing that you're my friend, he'll treat you nicer than others. He'll give you a better price. He'll treat you nicer than others. But many times, tell him I sent you means I'm, I'm the important guy here. Don't forget. I sent you. He knows me. You'll get bargains, meaning... Realize who I am. That's sometimes the idea of uh, tell him I sent you. Sometimes it's really innocent and really uh, uh, in a humble way you say, you just want to help your friend. But sometimes or many times it comes from a place that you want him, your friend, to see how important you are. That if you say your name, if he says your name, wow, you're the friend of. Ooh, oh. So it gives you pride. So Hashem wasn't doing that with Moshe Rabbeinu. Tell Paro I sent you. <laughs> That's not the meaning. <laughs> That's not what Hashem needs. That Paro should say, wow, <laughs> you're, you're a friend of, Moshe, of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. So, and contrary, he didn't care about a Kodesh Baruch Hu. So it's not the point there. It was giving over his kavod to, to other people because he doesn't need to hold it for himself. Hashem is melech kavod. He controls it. From this we can take a general, a, a, a general uh, uh, lesson, moral lesson, that we must control ourselves. We must control our uh, features and needs to the point where we're not enslaved to external uh, issues. If it may be uh, temptations, if it may be uh, uh, boastfulness, uh, greediness, uh, money, if we're controlled by something external, then we're not melech hakavod. We're not mimicking Hashem as controlling, controlling the external features that uh, may pull us in different directions. So you have to mimic Hashem that we control our inner self and our are controlled by these external features that pull us away from the beaten track. And this is what's unfortunately uh, seems to have happened to uh, this author, uh, Chaim Walder, who was, uh, again, as I said before, uh, really had powers in him. Uh, he was uh, magicianal almost with all that he wrote and all that he spoke. And all the uh, consult, consulting, the people consulted in him. He was, he was a true hero in the Haredi world. He, 
he was able to voice the uh, Hashkafa. He even had, he even had a weekly article in Yated Neiman. That's the, that's the most important paper of the Litvish world. Yated Neiman. He had an art, uh, a weekly uh, column there called Hashkafa Teora. Pure Hashkaf. There he wrote all about what the Haredi world uh, believes in. And he was their spokesman. He was the spokesman of the Haredi world all over the world. Uh, his books were translated in many, many languages. Uh, and they really served as educating, uh, as an edu educating process to many, many, many kids. Tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of kids. Who, who, who grew, grew up uh, on, based on his books. And even for adults, he started writing also and uh, radio shows and everything else. And then it turns out that for many, many years, he's been uh, behind the scenes doing very, very nasty things, to say the least, and ruined the lives of many, many people uh, with regards to uh, Tzniut issues. And... Uh, it's hard to believe because if because you see you think a person like that is pure from within as much as he speaks outward. It turns out that it's all corrupt inside and it's all so ugly behavior. And uh, it's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde almost, like two different people. So, uh, psychiatrically, uh, I guess uh, there's some ways to. Uh, it's beyond, to, beyond the it's beyond psychi psychiatric psychiatric yeah, issues. Good and evil is I don't know something overriding in the universe beyond just. Uh, uh -huh, it's not just a medical. It's not just a medical right, situation. Right. Uh -huh. beyond, yeah. Wow! 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 More scary. You couldn't even not not even medicine would help him uh, control himself. Someone can have impulses, fine. Yeah. But once you're harming other people, that's crossing a line. Uh -huh. you, know, you have to be evil to hurt innocent people. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know how yeah. to explain evil. Wow. wow. But you did the right medicine. Well, well, it, well in the end, yeah. Yeah. Which, uh, again, even that, even that doesn't fit anything religious. Anything of the of the Torah world uh, to end one's life that way, and to... I find the Haredi website. And I mentioned it was suicide. I know that. Yeah, yeah, the I've Haredi seen. I've seen. seen. We're sorry to announce that uh, the educator yeah. passed away at the age fifty-two. Yeah, the age. Website. I mentioned the suicide. I mentioned what he did. Is no, nothing. Right. It not. even said in certain places, "Avad Sadik Minar." It's like Hamas ignored totally yeah, what went know. on. Yeah. Yeah, that's another issue. But I first want to say a few words about <clears throat> how is it possible for a person to, to be living in two opposite worlds at the same moment? Same moment. How, how can that be? We, we learn so much about the Torah being, uh, being the, the basis to, to morality and uh, to fixing a person's thoughts and they would control, self-control by learning Torah. And yet, he learned a lot of Torah, this man. And yet, the way he behaved was uh, terrible. So I think I mentioned in this class in past years and more than once, but uh, unfortunately, we had to repeat it again to remind ourselves. There's a gra. I read this uh, in the Quartier Minion after, after Davin Quartier Minion also. It was, it's a very shocking gra. Everyone started, it started an uproar when I read this gra, because it's a gra that changes for me. When I first read it a few years ago, it changed my perspective totally of what it means to be, uh, what the Torah does to a person. The gra in Evan Shlema, it's a book that was composed by one of his students, uh, of his teachings to his students. It wasn't written by the gra, but it's very reliable. 100% reliable, written by one of his closest students, to describe what the Gra ta had taught them. Or in certain places, they 
quote from where he wrote in other places. So <clears throat> in Evan Shlema, chapter A, chapter one, Perak Aleph, Seif Yud Aleph, section 11, the short passage, it's all short, pa short passages there. The book is compiled of short ideas that he throws out. So there he says the following. He says the Torah, in the Torah, is compared to rain. And yet in the beginning of Parshas Hazinu, it says, Ya'arof, tizal katalimrati. My words, likhi, my, my, my gift to you is like matar, is like rain. And like dew. The Torah is compared to rain and dew. Says the Gra, in what way do we, are, are, is the Torah compared to, 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 to the water that comes down from the world, from heaven, from the sky? Says the Gra, same as by rain, Whatever seed was planted in the ground, that's what the rain is going to grow. Uh, that's what is, what's going to grow out by, by rain. Rain doesn't change the seed itself, the growth of what's going to grow. Exactly. And if it's thorns, then thorns will come out. And if the ground has flower seeds in it, so flowers will come out. It all depends what was planted in the ground before him. Says the Gra, it's exact same by Torah. It's very, very surprising to hear this. Says the Gra, on one hand, Torah can make a person tremendously good. But that's only if he himself, the person himself, has planted inside himself and has fixed himself in a way that he's in the right direction. If he's if he's able to control his Yetzihara, his evil uh, <clears throat> uh, tendencies, and to, and, 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 and to structure his structures of, is, is a good-natured one, then if you learn Torah on top of that, you become tremendously good. Torah is like rain. It nurtures and, and blows up all that's inside you. So if you have good attributes, good positive attributes in you, then the Torah makes them even greater. And we hear all these stories of real gedolim, and not only in the Torah were they so knowledgeable, but Ben Adam Lachavero, they were tremendous people. They were good people. They were tremendously positive, good people, good hearted, good deeds, uh, thoughtful, straight, honest, those are the real gedolim, humble, because, the, because they were, they first of all, were able to control themselves and lead themselves into the right direction. And then on top of that, learned so much Torah that it made them humongously good. But on the other hand, says the Gra, on the other hand, if a person isn't able, isn't able to control his inside and inside he's, the bad features in him still rest, still uh, lie within him. And uh, he, he doesn't have, he, he, he's not sure of himself or he's even directed by them. And on top of that, he learns Torah. The more Torah he learns, the more evil he will be. Very surprising to hear this. It's a gra before us. Aleph, Yud Aleph, and Evan Shleiman. The more Torah he learns, the greater evil person will be in. And we hear such terrible stories like this one and like other quote-unquote rabbis who did some terrible things that we, could, we can't believe a human being can do. So, so cruel. And even Goim wouldn't do such. Even Goim would, be, would control themselves from harming others to such an extent. I don't have to mention names, uh, but we know... Such stories, recent stories like that, including this last one. So that's what the Quran is telling us. And he's based on <coughs> a few Gemaras that say the, the, similar, uh, the similar point. They say, Zacha naaset lo sam chayim, lo zacha naaset lo sam If you're worthy, 
Zaha, you're worthy. It doesn't mean you won the lottery. Zaha, I won the lottery. It turned out to be, it turned out to be good. No, it means zaka. If you purify yourself, you work on yourself to have good midos. And on top of that, you learn Torah. Now set los sam chaim. Then that grows, makes the good in you grow and grow and grow. I would say the Torah is like energy. Torah gives a person energy. But in which direction? A person can have energy to do good and energy to do bad. Torah is energy. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an atomic bomb of energy. It has like so much uh, strength in it and, and, and it gives you so much strength. But the, You're saying that a person has Right. Ten hours a day. Yeah, Gemara ten hours. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Thousand percent. Really. <clears throat> it's very shocking. I know. I think that's the same theory behind um, yeah. the night of December twenty fourth. Hashem won't study right. Torah. Right. 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 Little Because study Torah. You know, that somehow that night is sort of a bad impure night. Impure yeah. night. So you don't want to strengthen that. Strengthen the energy of the uh-huh. impurity. Right. It's something of that of that time. And although you know the litvaks make fun of the chassidim. That's uh, I know, but, but that's, anytime but they find a, <laughs> an opportunity not to learn. <laughs> yeah, it's just a joke, right. of course. But yeah, yeah. No, the truth of the matter is, it's, that's the idea. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I don't know how to connect exactly to that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, the Gra would say, only if you work on yourself, only if you, uh, if you, if you're led by the Yetzirah Tov, then it's Meshivat Nafish. There's always a condition behind all these Pesukim. Torah Shantima is always true, no matter what. The Torah itself, it doesn't mean Chasvachil, the Torah has uh, immorality in it, Chasvachil. The Torah is tremendous. It gives strength and power. But it's the person who has prior choshis. We have free will to decide which direction we want to go. And that free will is, doesn't change because of learning Torah. Yeah. So that's how I know. That's how we all grew up. Right. Well, thinking I mean, that way. Ta- I mean, you, you have the, the various apicaras. I mean, right. They, they've learned and learned and learned, yet. Exactly. That was one of the cases I wanted to also bring as, a, as an example like to this. After... Right. And we have much more recent uh, examples. People learn huge amounts of Torah. You can learn at an intellectual level somehow, and it doesn't Seep change in. your inner. Right. Inner moral part. Yeah. Exactly. And it works, it gives you power, strength, it empowers you. But if, you, if it doesn't seep in all the way through because you're blocking it, there's free will. So according to the Rambam, free will, that's also very, very shocking and surprising because that's not how we grew up learning. According to the Rambam, free will is a thousand percent, meaning Hashem doesn't even know what you're going to choose. That's the Rambam's opinion. Hashem doesn't know what you're going to choose. We know that the Kabbalistic world doesn't think so. Kabbalistic world holds that Hashem knows everything and you knew what you're going to choose before you chose. And then we have all that issue of how do you have real free choice if Hashem knows. What's that? I thought the Rambam was, it was different planes. Free will with us is, is time related. Because right. God is above time. That's how he knows, but he doesn't, he doesn't, affect, he doesn't affect anything. That's the way I was. I was that's in Hechos Shuba. That's how he writes Hechos Shuba. Right, exactly. Right? right. But if you read various, various other places, more in the Ruchim is filled with it. Yeah. Filled with I'm it. Not, I'm not old enough. 
<laughs> yeah, one of the Ruchim is not kab- Kabbalistic. You can learn it. It's, uh, it's normal, regular Hebrew. It's philosoph- philosophical, very philosophical. There he says it very clearly that I find you, uh, I have, a, there's an article written by, by Rav Yitzchak Shilat. There's an article written by Rav Shilat. He's a rabbi in uh, Malay Dumim, Yeshiva. He's an expert in Ramah. Expert, he even studied Arabic in order to understand the original Rambam and not to be based on translations. They were written on the Rambam. He's very, he's very thorough, thorough in his research of the Rambam. He wrote an article to show what Rambam's true opinion was about Bechir Hovshis, and he, he proves he proves that the Rambam holds that it's complete. There's, There's no way the Haredi will advise that. Right. No way. Yeah. And so do we not, because uh, the Rambam was overruled by Kabbalists and, 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 and Hasidism. Uh, they all say the exact opposite. And there are many Midrashim the other way. But the Midrashim uh, can, can show in both directions. The Midrashim this way, Midrashim that way. So you can't really be yeah. decisive by a Midrash. Rambam sort of the Andalusian and the Geonic rational school. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. He was based on that, the more rational, rational uh, system of, of learning Torah. Uh, so I'm saying that uh, self-discipline and, and, and free will, all that has to do with the person himself. Nothing can affect it. Unless, meaning, now the Torah can definitely serve as an educating book to learn how to be a good person. That's definitely true. You have Musar books, you have Midrashim, you have Imuna books, many, 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 many books who are written to, to, to direct us in the right direction. I'm not saying that you have to first do other things before you learn Torah. No, there are parts in Torah that teach you how to behave. The problem is that if you're not, like Alan just said before, if you're not allowing the Torah, allowing the Torah to, to seep through and to be thoroughly connected to it and thoroughly be guided by it, so it's just superficial. It's just on top of your free will not to do not to go by Torah, rather to be led by your Yetzirah. That's your will, that's your free will. And then Torah, on top of that, as the Gra says, it's like rain falling on those corrupt, evil seeds that you're directed by Yetzirah. And then it just grows and grows and grows, and it becomes monstrous. Because of all that spiritual strength you have in you, uh, which is all on top of something very corrupt inside. That's what the Gra teaches us. And this uh, helps us understand, at least, not that we want this to happen to anyone, but it helps us understand how could this be that some people are so corrupt yet so learned. This Gra helps us understand this, and which means that a person has to be aware. I think that's the main point that we have to take from all this. Awareness of who he is and not to ignore himself and do things that are considered the right thing. Many people aren't aware of themselves, to say, to say the least. Or sometimes they're hiding something on purpose. But in the beginning, I think in the beginning, this person like this Chaim Valde wasn't a person who was born evil. He wasn't born evil. In the beginning, he must have ignored this Yetzirah. He didn't give it enough thought and awareness that it's in him. He ignored it. He kept on doing the right things. He got filling, davening, keeping Shabbos most Haredi possible and the best way possible, but he, he, he didn't give it, he didn't give him his, himself, his personality, enough thought to correct what's going on in him. And that's how it grew and grew and grew until he didn't have control anymore. 
if you have the right motivation, then the poor will. Exactly. Exactly. So you really if you're motivated by Yetzirah Tov and you fight the Yetzirah, you're aware that there's the Yetzirah in you. Then, you'll have, then, it's all you the then it's all you're the strength to fight viciously against the. Against these the, people actually, because they haven't struggled with it, right? They, they let it go, them. right? And it really empowers them. Exactly. It's unbelievable. Are you say there are. Who else do you know besides Acher and, and there's not a lot of people like that, right? Of the deni- deniers, Kofrim? The people that like this who had that bad side of the Torah and just took them and they did terrible things. Unfortunately, Jewish history, unfortunately there are many, many. All, they were all traitors. They were all Meshomers. The people that got us, that, that got the Jews and the people were ex-Jews and murdered uh, Christianity. The doctor there, the the whole big list. Yeah, take a, shop, take... A, a, a lot of everyone that influenced the church to burn the Talmud, how are they able to do that? Because they were because they sent the Talmud. I'm not saying they were good on they were dull in. Right. The Shiva Bakers that knew the Talmud well enough and then one of the stuff that was that could have been interpreted in not a nice way to the Goyim. It's, it's all Jews. What are history? Jews are our worst enemy. Yeah, take uh, Shabtai Tzvi. It's enough to take him. Shabtai Tzvi took with him. Hundreds of thousands of Jews to convert to Islam. He was considered a tremendous tzaddik. He was doing sigufim and uh, learning uh, Torah day in day out. And he was considered the Mashiach. He made himself the Mashiach, and hundreds of thousands of Jews believed in him. And he took them all to Islam. And tens and tens of rabbis also, even more, a lot of rabbis who believed in him. Trust me, wow. a lot of research they've done. Wow. A lot of rabbis. Wow. You'd be shocked. Wow, 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 huh? wow. Yeah. You scary. Be scary. But they didn't lose their faith, these uh, rabbis. They stopped in the right, they stopped themselves at the right time. No? Right. So. All the way. The whole battle of the Gra against Hasidism, which is a vicious battle, the Gra battled them very, very strongly, was because of Shabtai Tzvi. He thought they were going in the same direction as Shabtai Tzvi. And if he hadn't battled them, they could have maybe gone into that area. We don't know. It could be that he balanced Hasidism. No, the Gra came a little bit after Shabtai Tzvi. Ah, that they weren't keeping halacha properly. They didn't care about halacha so, so 16, much. They... Yeah, 1676. Ah, 1676. Yeah. The 16, the 1680. Ah, good, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Very close. Okay. I think you said 1780. Oh, I did. I, oh, I so you're mistaken. 1680, yeah. 76. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. So, um, yeah. In the earliest stages of what little I know about it, yeah. Could have made a, made a left turn. Right, right. They, 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 they because the Gra, by fighting, by battling them, he got them into he got them into position. Unbelievable. That's what of Cook writes about the uh, about the, uh, the, the, the that battle was really to to uh, balance both sides. Right, right. But we didn't know that at that time. We didn't know that. Also, right. Well, Rav is, is, uh, is a portrait of the Gra and of the uh, oh, the Balatania, right? The two uh, <laughs> two sides, both sides. Yeah. So yeah, we have much more modern uh, people as well who became real kofrim after learning Torah many many years. Chaim, Bi- Chaim Nachman Bialik, and you have. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of Lashon of yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not saying they were. They were they were Jewish guys. They were Dolin. Yeah, okay. Huh? They could have. They could have. If they would have continued, they could have become Dolin. Yeah, they could have become. They they, they left early. <laughs> they had the potential. There's um, Segal, uh, brother of the of Don Segal, his brother. Um, I forgot his first name, Segal. He studied Panovich, 
This is very recent. This is Mamash. Two decades ago, he sat in Panovich, and <clears throat> the day he left, Rav Shach, who was Rosh Hashiba Panovich, cried and cried and cried. He said, you, you're, you're expected to be the next God of the door. He was such a strong learner in Panovich. <clears throat> he left totally, became a complete kofir, Mechal Shabbos, completely. Segal. His family name is Segal. He became a, report, a news reporter. He didn't become something so great in the Chiloni world, but uh, uh, Shach really cried over him when he left the yeshiva. Yeah. Rev Steinberg? Don Segal. Yeah. Yes, David. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know if you're going to address it, but, and I, I really have no names. I don't know any of the names in the Haredi world. I don't know the newspapers as well as everyone. So I, are you going to address, if you can, why is it not Chilol Hashem, the way, the treatment, you know what I mean? By the names I don't even know. In the, David in the mentioned, <coughs> yeah. I understand, let me add this. I understand it's a mashbear. Right. Rav Shmuel Eliyahu, who I Crisis. have watched it here on the radio, his interview, and they're victims. I don't understand. I don't understand the halakhic perspective on that. I, it's, 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 uh, there's no halakhic perspective, which is possible. <laughs> Uh, if I'm, I'm just yeah, you... I understand your point. Yeah, it's very difficult for me. Also, David is asking. I'll just repeat your question for the people here. Um, <clears throat> how do we understand if there is an understanding the way the gdolim of the Haredi world today, the big big rabbis, are treating this case in a way that's even I would say worse than ignoring it. They're whitewashing. What are, what are they saying? They're yeah. saying that uh, it's Lashon Hara to speak about this person in public. Saying Lashon Hara. They're saying that uh, whoever, whoever uh, publicized these stories was over on Shfichus Damim. They were Shofich his, his blood because they embarrassed him in public. You're not allowed to embarrass him in public. I even heard, it's like <laughs> with the Lundish finger. I even heard a big rabbi quoted from this quote from a big, big rabbi, which I'm a thousand, not a hundred percent, a thousand percent sure he never would have said such, such a thing because I have deep, deep respect to him. Rabbi Gershon Edelstein is the number one, together with Rabbi Chaim Kenevsky, he's the number one chief rabbi of the Haredi world. And uh, he was quoted as if saying, I'm sure it's wrong. I'm sure it's something from his... Uh, and the small guys around him who at least presented it to him in a, in a way that made him say this. He said, a person who commits adultery, and that's part of the case, those are some of the cases that this person is uh, suspected of, of having done, Chaim Bada. True adultery with married women. A person who commits adultery is only Chayev Karet or Mitas Beitim, but he gets his portion of the Olam Haba. Yes, Lochek Laram Haba. But a person who is Mivayesh Barabim, a person who embarrasses others in, in public, he has no Chek Olam Haba. So worse are those who brought out the story than the one who did all that they suspected of doing. Much worse for them to. It's something we can't. That's a perversion of Judaism. What? Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. He's 98 years old, Leon Hara. 98 years old. He's with it. But I'm saying, yeah, but on the other hand, it's of an age that they can easily distort his mind by saying all kinds of things to him that he's not aware of enough. He, he's, not, he's not reading anything. He's not listening, hearing anything. It's just what they tell him. And if they put it in a light, you know, it all depends how you say things to someone. Put in a certain light, then he says that he reacts accordingly. That's what they want to get out of him. There is, a, there is a value in that society to, to, not, to not use the court of public opinion. If I could be speaking, I mean, I've had an occasion over the years to meet with people in the Haredi community to talk specifically about sexual abuse, which really happened to themselves, or their friends, or come home, their mother said, 
that didn't happen that way. Don't talk about it. Because that, that's just, uh, that's just, yeah. Just, but that's exactly what's so terrible because we had to stop that from yeah, happening. Uh, and the question is from within the Haredi community, how, where and how is that, that happening? Where is it? Well, because I don't think it was from, from outside because the, 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 you circle the wagons and you find anybody. Even if they don't right. believe it, right, right, right. That that so, right. It becomes even worse. Yeah. That's yeah. American for it. Yeah. 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 Because they wear the same black hat, they're totally different. Right. Right. university educated. Is it that way? And there they treat it differently? No, in the not Robert Turski himself, in the Haredi yeah, element I, in America, they no, treat no, all these I, cases I got, differently. I got an email about this from you know, just from back from Chicago, fairly Haredi. Synagogue and the rabbi <laughs> spoke out very strongly against there's, there's against what's going on here. There's a rabbi. Uh -huh. there's a rabbi you have said. to protect women and, and those uh, who were hurt. Yeah. Right, very, right. Very, the victims. The victims very, very are the strong. ones who protect. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's not the more, same way they're treated here. It's more insulated and extreme. Yeah. There's it's a rabbi. In, right. In, uh huh. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. He wrote. Article that you could describe. Wow. Just, wow. Uh, wow. Of, of how Rabbi came to him. I sent you the article. Oh, yeah? Oh, okay. I didn't see it yet. I just sent you it in a half hour. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't have seen it. Okay. Yeah, wow. Wow. I have to read and that. I, said, I, I didn't say, I wrote to the rabbi. He didn't give a shot. What a wonderful article he wrote. Wow. I wrote to him. He didn't respond. I you, know him you know him personally? In the sake? What's his name? It's a shtibla. Yeah, it's a shtibla. All the way around the... 24th name. Minion factor. Minion factor. It's like 10, 15 hours. Wow, 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 wow. The truth is, it pains me. It pains me that there's so many Jews there in America still. That they have so many Minyanim going on. He's a good guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
This I heard from Rav Lior Engelman also on a Friday, and I think he pinpointed the the uh, how 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 come this is the way they relate to, to to all that happened. Besides the fact that it's a tremendous shock, and and there could be an aftershock that they'll fix what they've said uh, immediately after it happened, but. Uh, just to see the aspect, to hear the spadium that were done over this person, the spadium that Big Dolim gave, is something that's unheard of. Just the fact that he committed suicide should have, you know, there's barely, there's barely a, re- a reason to bury him within the fence. Barely a reason. Where did they bury him? Normally. Oh, really? I don't know where, normally. Totally normal. To totally normally. Wow. No, so that they've said already. Uh, Decades already that uh, we bury even those who commit suicide within the fence because, yeah, they've changed halacha from the days of Chazal. We like to bury them because we say that a person who gets to that state is probably anus. He's probably he's he's probably forced to. He's he didn't have any choice. And one is uh, patre. He's not an evil person for doing it because he had psychological uh, pressure and 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 hence. Uh, it becomes uh, impossible for him to, to overcome. So it's as if he was only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been that way for many, many years already. You got buried them normally. Avilut also. The chief rabbi of Israel went to him in Nachim Avil, his parent, his, his wife and children, which is something that I don't think it's something as terrible had he also balanced it by. By saying how terrible this right. deeds, uh, this, yeah, these actions yeah. were, yeah. he had to because there was public uh, harassment almost uh, against him. So he had to come out with some quote like that as well. We have to also pity his wife and children. They didn't do anything wrong. His wife and children are complete victims of of him also, and uh, they ruined their life totally, totally, totally. Yes. Nothing yes. left. Yes. Sure, sure, sure. One child died uh, of cancer years ago, 28 years old, being a father of children already. Sorry for that. Something uh, clicked off. So I said to the people in Beit Medrash that it's time to move to Chal Shabbos. But just uh, the last point that Rabbi Engelman explained about the nature of the Gedolim uh, who spoke up uh, against those who brought to a stop, to a halt, all this person. Um, <clears throat> he says that in general, it's not it's not uh, um, it's not so positive the way he explained it, but it's I think the only way to explain it. In general, there's a lot of black and white in the Haredi world. It's black and white, meaning anything that's a little bit more complicated, complex, complex understanding in general of of religious life, of reality, of uh, confronting other opinions. Anything that's complex, they don't get. They don't get. It's a lot of black and white. By the way, I said to my wife afterwards, maybe that's why they wear black and white. 
it's like almost a sign yeah, to what they are. Gray, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're colorful. <laughs> yeah, the rainbow. Yeah, uh, that that's a sign for other type people. <laughs> Quite happens. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, something in between. Um, the idea is that um, they the feeling was that. Opposite of the sagra that I quoted before, that a person who's totally in there, learning Torah, speaking the voice of Torah, uh, educating according to Torah, being close to the gedolim, he was the closest possible. You can get to gedolim. Every gadol allowed him in with no appointment before. He was he was the most loved and and, and closest to, to the gedolim possible. So. It's impossible for such a person to do such things because it's black and white. Either you're pure and holy as you appear to be, or you're chiloni, uh, you're, you're kofar, you're, 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 the, you're from the bad guys, you're not Haredi. And here they find something that's complex. They find within them a person who is completely distorted. So it's hard to cope with such a thing. And he said that... Uh, had he not committed suicide, it would have been much more difficult for them to, to, to deal with it because he would be alive amongst them and they would have to find out what happened. Now that he committed suicide, it stopped the whole discussion. So now they can hide back, hide behind the black and white again. In what to you? <laughs> right. Now they can say, no, he was harassed and 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 humiliated in public, and what a tzaddik that, uh, that look what they did to him. They can they jump, turn, him into a victim. turn him into a victim, and then they can hide again behind this this black and white uh, understanding. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and burying out the grain. True, true, and but I think it's the same idea based on the gra, based on that gra that we said before in a different direction, not chas from the point of view of Yetzahara, but it's the same idea. The question is, the question is how much does that, th- that way of thinking, complex way of thinking that you find in the Gemara and the Talmud, how much does that seep in to your personality? I, I agree, and that's where of Cook came in the picture into the picture historically, and shattered the two thousand year conception conception of of Galus. Sorry, this time an internet uh, reception issue. Anyway, this hurts so, hurts He said, "Chotim al digleinu," as if we inscribe, we're inscribing on our Zionist flag. Einanu chelik belokei Yisrael. The same language that the Greeks forced the Jews to leave their belief in Hashem. Hertz said that. He knew nothing about Yiddish. Right. He knew my mom was nothing. Nothing. Yeah. His children. Yeah. 
Yeah. Where well, married sure. Christians. Yeah. They, they sure. Baptized the Christians. So he was very, very far. His gun, his his uh, the one underneath him, right underneath the vice, right hand man. his right hand man was Max Nor Nordau. And Max yeah. Nordau, what? Nordau is one black boy. That's a name, a name that to him? Obviously. Oh, boy. So not sure why in Israel. I don't know if you want to live on that street. <laughs> <laughs> he was a, he was a physician. Because he married. It could be he was a physician. I read a very interesting story about him. But, yeah. Know. He married a Goya himself. Yeah. He married a Goya. He never converted her. Married a Goya. And when um, Herzl died, died young. Herzl died at the age of 44. Yeah, he was very accomplished <laughs> for 44. Um, he, they, they offered Max Norda to become the head of the Zionist movement after Herzl. He was his vice. So he says, no, this I can't take upon myself. I have Chazir in my house. <laughs> That's what he said. So, yeah, so Tzvi Cook said that that was Hirurei Chuba. He had like a Hirurei Chuba. Yeah, he, began, he began the process of Chuba. He never followed up. But he, he understood that he can't be the role model. Ad married to Goya, the moral model of, of, of the Jewish Zionist movement. Anyhow, so. His father was a rab. Oh, yeah? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's complex. So, <laughs> yeah, that, that's real that, complexity. The story I heard, he was a doctor and he was treating, you know, just very much part of society, nothing to do with Judaism at all. Yeah. And he treated a um, Haredi, oh. a, relig a religious family. I can't remember the, the details of that, but yeah. he was so moved by how their they nature. The illness. And, yeah. Right, right. The, the patient and their uh -huh. faith and all uh -huh. that. Yeah. But that turned him toward Back his religion. Towards... And that, that at least turned him toward Zionism. Like he was completely ah, divorced Zionism. from the community. And ah, after that, so he came more. Jewish connected connect right, right. to, to Jews, but not right. so, Judaism. Right. So uh -huh. that, that led to his Zionism. Just he got, he got, he got okay. 15? Uh -huh. yeah. wow. As a doctor, yeah, he was away from it as a doctor and he he reconnected he by these Haredi families. Zionism, he reconnected. Wow, wow, wow. Interesting. Anyhow, so I'm saying Rav Cook was the first great rabbi. There were others. Before him, Rav Kalisher, of uh, Alkali, Mohaliver, or a little bit before of Cook, but Rav Cook was the main one that came up with this understanding and developed it very deeply with massive amounts of books and, and, and teachings that were coming to a new age in Jewish in the Jewish world in Jewish history, and this new age calls for complexity, calls for Deepening our insight into what's going on, into into in, into re reality, and understanding that Hashem has different ways to function. It's not always the clear way, and it's based on tons of midrash and tons of chazal. But even those who learn them in and out sometimes are blinded by life, by da daily daily life. Yes, he was a big rabbi as well. He was the chief rabbi, not not together with him. It was Rav Yaakov Meir was the chief yeah, rabbi with him. Yaakov Meir. So was Hayuziel was partnering with uh, Rav Herzog, Herzog, or the next generation. But Rav Kook was really Rav Kook came out with the with very deep insights. If you learn his his books, you see how how his th thinking was so deep, and he understood that. Hashem functions in different ways that we don't necessarily understand or agree with, as if. But we can't disagree with Hashem. This is the way Hashem decided. It's, this is how the Gula will unravel Dafka by using Chiloni people. So even though they were anti-religious and they fought religion and, 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 and they said, we don't want anything to do with the past, the, the, the old Jews, Yeshua Yashan, primitive, unrelated to modern life, and yet to say, these are Hashem's messengers to bring the Gula. To be able to say that, 
is some tremendous insight that Rav Kook had to be able to connect with them to say that, okay, they're wrong about their perspective about Torah and mitzvahs, but they're very, very right about their anxiousness and eagerness to uh, build a Jewish state. And let's connect with them on that point, from that point of view, and help them build the state. Whole series of books that right. changed the way that the world looked at itself. He obviously was a bit of a thought. Sure. You know, he uh, had sensitivity, much, he had an awareness, he had a, a way of approaching sure. people were complex. Like you're saying, you know, there's uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But uh yeah, he was definitely complex. <laughs> His personality was very complicated, very disordered. But uh, I'm saying the view that the Haredi world takes on many things. I'll just give an example. The example is with Koch with his insight of modernity and what's going on today. But in general, this idea of combining Torah and Mada. You don't find that in the Haredi world here in Israel. You find it in the Haredi world in America. I think there they do have a go for a degree, some of them. Right, right. Ramada. He, by the way, he was anti-Zionist. That's another issue, but uh, yeah, yeah Hirsch was very anti-Zionist. But you take her of Cook again. He speaks of he speaks of everything, of, of, of this inclusive Torah, inclusive Torah that includes everything. He sees eye to eye the way Hashem functions in this world in various different ways, and to be able to combine everything, it's, it's, it's a huge Torah, and all the Haredi world have to say about Rav Cook is to put him on cherem. He's on cherem. You can't, they don't allow, <laughs> they don't allow learning one word of a cook. That's how they, that's how they, that's how the system works. Because you know, then you don't need to confront. You don't need to, you don't need to, 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 to learn. Fear, exactly. Exactly. Chasvechea, that can be the right way. <laughs> yeah. But again, I would, I would understand if they would learn of Cook and battle him and fight back and show why they think differently. But just to ban him, that, that's an, e- an easy way out. That's, again, black and white, right or wrong. But where is the complexity? Where, is the, where are you, where are you uh, struggling and, 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 and in the show? In the world, the, the, the move for the, the soldiers, for the, the Saudi yeah, those, those also terrible. Go to school and get degrees for Panasa. Yeah. That they, little by little, they're making headway. The greatest problem is going to be if the, if the, if the news catches it, uh-huh. the spotlight it, because you know it darn well. We're, everybody's going to go to right. their own corner and come out fighting. Right. But right. Right. there's a movement in the Haredi world yeah. to somehow keep Haredus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and, and yet, to serve in the army, go to the university, and all that. But it's very, very on the. It's now on the side now. Yeah, right. But it's very much on the side now, right now. It's, it's for those who haven't made it in the yeshiva or something. And uh, also, the way they're disrespected when they come home. It's terrible. They call those people who go nachshonim. <laughs> no, even worse. <laughs> Hardakim, they call it. Yeah, we're waiting, we're uh-huh. yeah, that's a compliment to being Nachshon, yeah. but uh, I think they they have other other terms that they uh, humiliate them. Anyway, it's I'm sorry to say this. This is the an explanation that can be given, although it's a very very sad one, very sad explanation, and. Uh, I hope, I really hope that this incident will shatter and, and, and awaken that society, that environment there to, 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 to think of what's going on, uh, where have they gone wrong? And uh, who knows? Hopefully, it'll open them up to many other things, but at least in this area, not to always hide these things. and. The main thing that drives 
all the, uh, the, the way they relate to all these cases is shiduchim. That's the main thing that bothers me. Because if something comes out, this and this person, this and that, then all his kids, zero way to, to marry anyone. No way to have, have shiduchim. So they have to hide everything in order for no one to know, and then they can marry whoever they'd like. That's, I think, the main drive that they have in many such cases, which is totally distorted, of course. So, uh, after all that being said, I, I still like to repeat over and over again, and I truly believe in this, that there's a lot of good. There's a lot of good in the Haredi world. There's a lot to learn from them. There's a lot of Torah that they teach, true Torah. True Torah. And I always point out, all the books around me, in back, behind, on all my sides, 95% of them were written by Haredi rabbis. The, the Torah, the, the humongous flourishing of Torah, and the way we have uh, the Shas, uh, just the Shas of Metivta or Satanstein, have uh, a revolu- revolution in a great revolution in Torah, in Torah studies, and it's only due to them. There's no way the Tidomi world, and definitely not the Chiloni world, could have taken upon, them, upon ourselves these uh, tremendous, tremendous uh, missions and, uh, and uh, projects like that. And that's one example. There's so many others. Uh, the greatest post scheme our generation and previous generations are Haredi people. Not saying they're of that type. They could be a little more fine-tuned and more complex thinking and more inclusive than what we described before, but still they are of the Haredi world. So after all, there's a lot to take from them. And we need them. We need their Torah. We need their hours and hours and hours of learning, daily learning that they spend. Uh, we, had it not been for them, historically, I'm not sure in the 50s, 60s, I'm not sure if anyone today would have been religious. No one. Because the Chiloni movement was so powerful, so overpowering here in Israel at least, that the Datilu world would have not sustained had it not been for the Haredi world in the 50s, 60s. The, the Tilumi, the Mizrahi, in those days they were called the Mizrahi Jews. They were ashamed. They were embarrassed to be religious. They were embarrassed with their kippah. They didn't wear a kippah. Only the Haredi world stuck up and continued Torah and continued tradition. And then we came uh, after them with the strength we have today with the Shibot Hezden, Shibot Bot that we have uh, in the, the Tilumi world as well. So after all that was said, there's a lot to learn from and a lot to uh, be thankful for what they've done and continue to do. And there are definitely many, 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 many more good stories and bad ones about, uh, about the rabbis, about their, their, their educators, about their people, full of chesed that they have, uh, they do with, uh, with organizations of chesed, of gmachim, of uh, Yad Sarah, of the Yad Eliezer, Ezra Mitzion, Hatzala, Kira movements, right? Of course, of course, Arachim, Midavut, everything. So there's a lot, a lot to learn from and take from and, and, and appreciate and be thankful for. But there is room to fix uh, quite major issues, major. Right, right, exactly. This uh, is an expression in Hebrew. Uh, you, we caught them naked, so to speak, uh, in this case. Uh, very, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Not so interesting, especially in English, but in Hebrew. Uh, right, red handed. Cut with their pants down. Ah, cut with their pants down. Uh-huh. Okay. Similar yeah, annotation. Um, yeah, so we need the. That's always what we're saying. We need the combination of all parts of society of the Jewish world. We need the combination of everyone together to make a wholesome, true Jewish nation, Jewish life, national life. We need the combination of all parts, including 
the most left chiloni. We need them as well. The moment you ban someone, the moment you throw them outside the fence, so A, you're damaging them much, much more because they hate Judaism much, much more. And B, you're losing something important in the Jewish world that only they can supply. Even if we don't know exactly what, because <laughs> they're so anti, and nothing sounds, sounds true with, 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 with their... That before Sabbath? Where in the uh, Leila Seder, in the Gada? Yeah, true. And they're all sitting on the ta- around the table, right? Right, the 12 tribes. Even Shimon wasn't uh, banned from the 12 tribes. And he was, Shimon was, I'd say, the worst of the tribes because he was never blessed, not by Yaakov and not by Moshe. He never got a blessing. Still, they, were, they remained part of the 12 tribes. And they needed to be scattered. Uh, it, is, it is not, yeah, they're, they're, they're needed, they're necessary, but just not together. Don't stay together. That's t- we can't take that. If you're scattered, you're not too well on it. The Chilonim is Hajj Rav Cook, and in the 40s and 60s, yeah, were Chilonim, but they loved the Jewish people and they loved heritage as well. Okay, so very different to the Tsarin or Harav, today's ultra extreme leftists. Yes, so that's why to say I really don't want to go into it, right? This is a whole what right, saying, Rabbi, it's different. The leftists. The extreme left and the extreme colony that Rav Kook did at the beginning of the Hanukkah. So we just need to. It's much, much different today. True. True. Those were self-hating Jews. True. But that's why we need. They were totally different. Today's Drek is Drek. Yeah. But again, that's why we need. Yeah. That's why we need another great, great person like Prasad or Rav Kook to come again in this generation. Sure. And explain to us, <laughs> and explain to us how come even that is part of the is part of, of, of the group. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Which uh, and answers answers David's point also. Uh-huh. I'm not familiar with Shagar's uh, works. Yeah, no, I know he was he was very uh, individualist. He had his views uh, different than most rabbis. Uh, I knew him personally. Rav Shagar. The abbreviations or something. Yeah. No, a little more, more than that. 10, 15 years ago. I used to dive with him in Shul in the Kiat Yeah. Um, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, but he wasn't at all like Rav Kook, meaning he wasn't mainstream. He, right. No, but his views aren't widely accepted within, the, within the, even the Datilu Mi Zionist world. Uh, individualist. But he, yeah, he, he's very smart. He's very deep. But we need someone like Rav Kook to come again. Maybe it's the Mashiach, finally. <laughs> the one we're really waiting for. So he'll explain to us how to include and, and everyone and anyone within the, within the borders and uh, find the good in every, in every position. Find the good. They were expelled. You shouldn't be saying that that is anti-Torah viewpoint. I mean, right? Because, yeah, because we, I think we're not entitled to decide that. I don't mean us, but I mean, but the the fact that there could be no matter how godly you you are, yeah, the fact that could be Jews outside the border, yes. So you just gave an excellent example for for for, for the opposite direction, because (laughs) Acher. Rabbi Lisha ben Avuya was a kofer in the worst sense possible. He knew the entire Torah Kula. He was a Tana. He's quoting the Perki Avos. Quoting Perki Avos. Quoted saying something positive. This is saying of 
Elisha ben Avuya in Perkeles. He was a true sage, true Tana. And then he veered off the derech. And Rabbi Meir continued learning Torah from him even after he became a Tana. He was able to take the inside good parts and throw away the bad. Even by Acher. That's a prime example that there's no such thing as a person who's completely expelled, completely out of the machin. Yeah, but isn't that substantially different when you take him and also that this who knows no Torah, who knows nothing? I would say that's much better because he's a Tinnak Shanishba, he was never taught otherwise. Whereas Akhir was a co fir with, with all his might. He knew everything and he. The social consequence, of your view, is nothing. Right? You're Jewish, you're not out there was, there were people for whom society, the rabbis in society said, you, 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 you put your badge on the table, you, you know, we're, we're taking your badge away. And, and, and that, I don't, I've been thinking a lot about, about that as a social instrument and tool. Because mm -hmm. I don't think today it's, it's used. Right, right. Uh, right. And rightfully so, because that's, that's, the connection to Eretz Israel, just the mere fact that they live here in Israel, connects them to the Jewish to the Jewish people, the Jewish world, even though their views are so, so, so anti-Jewish, anti-religious, anti-everything. It seems like they love the Arabs much more than they love the Jews. Yeah. Because he, Spinoza and others like, like him, were in Galus. And the moment they disconnected from Judaism in Galus, there's nothing to connect them anymore. There's no connecting point anymore. So they're completely expelled. And, and, and... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those could be worse, much worse than those here in Israel. That's true. That's true. But to work very, very hard to include them. Let's see uh, in what way they're included. But I'm say, I think the, our view, and the, well, this will end uh, this discussion, I think our view should be as much good as we can find in every single human being and definitely in groups, in general groups of, within the Jewish nation to find what, what they're trying to, it's not that they necessarily have the right viewpoint, but by having their viewpoint, they're pointing out to something we're missing. That's the idea. We have to figure out what are we missing that they need to say and do what they're doing. And we find if we find that, then they'll not be, it won't be necessary for them to view the world that way. That, that's the point we have to exact. That's the point. And then they'll just disappear, they'll vanish without needing to. Because they will have put their purpose. Exactly. Yeah. If, if there is a bad seed, right. there is horrible. Right. And that takes you off. Then, Very what, bad. then what? What, what? According to him, what's the story with that person? He's a complete Russia. He's a Russia. He's a so person they, that's they even. They can still do tshuva. Yeah, of course. Of course. Anyone can do tshuva, but it's, it becomes very, very different. That, that, that person also has something there that we have to listen to and figure out. And talk about. Yeah, that you're talking about someone individual. <laughs> And that's an individual. I'm, I'm talking more about viewpoints uh, uh, and, and camps and, 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 and sections in, Jew, in the Jewish nation. As an individual, yeah, you always had to try to pull him back. But sometimes you say uh, you're an evil man and you have to get punished. And, uh, you're, you're put in jail. You're put in jail. And uh, sometimes he has to run in jail. Sometimes he can come out if he uh, changes his ways. Okay. Let's just do a drop.
a leftover time for uh, Shabbos. It's a very shattering, uh, very shattering week last week. Uh, interesting how, the, how this will develop. Okay, so we're up to the chapter that's called Shaunei Shabbat. Uh, the use of timers on Shabbat, uh, which is uh, very common, very common on uh, everyone's Shabbos today, that we use timers for lights, for air conditioning, for plata, uh, heating system, all that. So what can be done not on Shabbat? First of all, the general concept of, time, of a timer is based on Beit Hillel's position, unlike Beit Shammai. Beit Hillel holds Ein Shvitat Kelim B'Shabbat, meaning one must, doesn't need to refrain from a melacha done by their utensils, by the Kelim. If automatically a melacha is done by, via a person's utensils, he doesn't have to stop it from happening. The example in the days of Beit Shai Beit Hila, which of course had nothing to do with Thericity, but the example was a grinding. Yeah, what was that? What do you say? Also, also true that too. And the grinding, they had these uh, millstones. They, ground, they used to grind the wheat with, so they had water. In some, in some situations, they had streams of wa a water stream that with its force, with its power, used to turn them the the mill around and then it ground the wheat. So you don't have to interfere with that before Shabbos. You can let the water continue flowing and, the, uh, and those millstones continue turning around and grinding your wheat. You know, it would be happening on Shabbat. <clears throat> so Bechamai did not allow that because Shvitat Kilim, according to Bechamai, is the right. Same as we have Shvitat Behemto, you mustn't allow our animals to be involved in any melach on Shabbos. That's explicit in the Torah. Your ox and donkey must rest as well. So no melach can be done, including carrying. If let's say a person has, owns a horse or a donkey, and uh, they have something on their back before Shabbat. And then the horse and donkey will be in a place without an Eruv, you must take it off their back. Because they're doing a malacha on Shabbos, same as a human being cannot carry, their animal can't carry either. If it's owned, owned by you. So that Shvita Behemto, everyone holds that because that's in the Torah. Very straight, distinct in Torah, explicit that it's not allowed. But Shvita Kilim is something more implicit. They, 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 they derived it from certain Psukim of the Torah, and Beit Hila argued against it. The only thing that, according to Beit Hila, still remains problematic on Shabbat regarding your kalim is the sound it makes. If it makes a sound that everyone hears it working, functioning on Shabbat, even Beit Hillel called rabbinically forbidden. It's rabbinically forbidden. That's called Av Shamilta. And the Gemara in Shabbos, Yud Zayin Amud Beis, 17b. The Gemara calls it Av Shamilta. The sound creates a non shabbistic atmosphere. And worse than that, people may think that you turned it on on Shabbat. You started, you started going on Shabbat. So you must refrain from anything that makes sound. In our days, the idea of a timer is based on the non shvisas kalim opinion of Beit Hillel, that we don't need to refrain from our vessels, from our utensils doing any malacha. So the light can come on suddenly or the air conditioning come on suddenly or turn off suddenly, even though that's a malacha. The, the uh, bulb is now involved by getting turned on. There was a malacha done on, on this bulb. But since there's no issue of Shuda Kelim on Shabbos, so we don't, we don't care that it happened. As long as your action was before Shabbos, you turned on the timer, clicked on the the pegs, you set, up, set the pegs and flip down the, the timer before Shabbat. So you've done the malacha itself before Shabbat, and then it goes automatically on Shabbat. That's fine. Oh, now the question is about noisy uh, electrical appliances like a dishwasher. So the post scheme really generally asks people to refrain from using such uh, machines that make sounds, not only sounds. It's also 
anything that's not generally accepted as uh, use to be used on Shabbat with a timer. For example, there are uh, there's a machine that bakes bread on its own. All you put in, you just put in the ingredients. We used to have such a machine. It's like a, 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 a square machine. You throw in all the ingredients uh, before you go to sleep. You put it on, turn it on. In the morning, it had this fresh smell. The whole house it smells like a bakery. It's uh, amazing. It's fresh smell of a, of a, of a, of a, of a yummy, uh, delicious, uh, fresh bread. They come in the morning, it's all prepared. Can you set that before Shabbat and have a fresh challah Shabbat morning where it's all done through the night and no noise, no noise, uh, nothing sounds uh, very strong there. Can you do that on Shabbat? So for sure not. Most can say... No, first of all, the difference because Shalant is cooked already, right? Shalant is just warming up. No malacha there. No malacha. But, uh, no, but you could ask uh, an easier question, uh, meaning more connected, relevant question. If you have a semi-cooked food, semi-cooked food before Shabbat, or even a non-cooked food before Shabbat, you can place it on a plata or on a blech-covered uh, fire, fire underneath, cover it with a uh, blech, and you put it on before Shabbat, and it cooks through Shabbat. You're allowed to do that. Uh, so the answer is, anything that's normally done, we don't care, we don't think it's avshamilta. We don't think it's, it's it creates a non shabbistic atmosphere. Whereas anything new that comes to the world, and you want to use do, uh, use a timer to uh, make it work, that we don't allow. Ramosha Feinstein has a tshuva that he even asked of people to refrain using timers for, for turning on lights, uh, lights on and off. Right, right. Well, in the very beginning, when they came out with these timers, because his understanding was that this is abshamilta. doesn't matter there's no sound. He says, what's the difference between making a sound or visibly seeing something turn on suddenly? It would seem to people like you turned down the light because it wasn't so common in those days to use timers yet. So he was against using timers in general for everything. But he was overridden by the public, <laughs> by, by the people. People started using them. It's, it's less, it takes off your expenses. Instead of having lights on the entire Shabbat, it's where they go on and off in the air conditioning. And uh, you save a lot of money that way. So I guess if you I guess the money is stronger than all psaks that are given. So even though his psak was against, people did it anyhow. And then he reversed his decision, his psak, because he said, now that it's so common, so why would someone say, turn down the light? Everyone knows he used the time. So common. The same thing would be saying with the, with the dishwasher. Oh, so I now, see, if I slowly. I someone's house on Friday night, I hear a dishwasher on, I know exactly what You happened. know, there's a timer. Okay, true. So the post can now become more and more lenient for two reasons. A, because of David just said, it's become more and more common. And B, it doesn't make such a strong sound anymore. It's, it's very, it's quiet. The, the modern ones are much more quiet than they used to be. So there's not, yeah. No, no, so yes, I'm saying there's not much of Avshamilta anymore. This one point uh, to say, the post can still prefer, it's not that it's, it's, it's not a must, but they prefer that you have the dishwasher working middle of the night, like two in the morning, three in the morning. Set the timer for it to work two in the morning because then no one notices it whatsoever. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, affect the Shabbos atmosphere in the house at all because you're sleeping. You fast asleep, you hear nothing, you see nothing, and you wake up in the morning, dishes are all done. That's one thing the post can prefer even in our days with your dishwasher. And the second, this has to be, this is a must, that in most dishwashers, when you open the door, <laughs> it stops the function, the cycle, or even it gets locked. You can't even open the door while it's working. So that means that when you shut the door, meaning, no, let's say it this way. If the door was kept open and the timer is set for it to work at two in the morning, is it going to work? No, because the door is open. 
you must close the door in order for it to go through the cycle, to, do this, to, go, to, do, to, to work. Meaning that when you close the door, the last time you close the door after you put in the dishes and went to sleep, that last time you shut the door made it work later on to work the cycle. So that's called grama. You're indirectly involved in the function of the of the dishwasher. Besides the fact that today there's also a circuit that detects if the door is closed or open, if the door is closed or open, so you're always affecting something by closing the door. So the, it's a must to have a dishwasher that is indifferent to the door being closed or open for it to function. It's a must. You have to get it to commission to rearrange your dishwasher so that even if the door is open, it still works perfectly. You wouldn't like it to, to work because your whole you'd be a mess in your kitchen, all the water will be flooding your kitchen, but it has to be that Tomet has these types of uh, technician, uh, technicians that know how to do this for you, or they have, they, they sell today machines that, washing machines that have, um, dishwashers that have this in them that, 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 that deactivates, it's a Shabbos mode. Well, the Shabbos, when you press it before Shabbat, and deactivates the door ne being necessary to be closed. And then, by using a timer and shutting the door, of course, because you just don't want to mess in the kitchen, you shut the door and you have a timer on before Shabbat, then you're allowed to use a dishwasher. So those are the two restrictions. A, that the door has no effect on the function of the dishwasher, and B, that it's done late at night, uh, two in the morning, so that it doesn't affect and bother the Shabbos atmosphere after all, even though today it's more common to use it. Yeah, so you say something? Yeah. Correct, turn it off. It doesn't matter, it started before Shabbat. The moment Shabbat begins, no machine can be working. Of course, of course. We don't pass like Bichamites, of course. And then the, 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 the initiation of the, of the act of your saying that is, that is problematic and needs to be judged. Yeah, meaning that if it's a continuous action from before, then it's okay. That's true. But even that, even that is providing it doesn't make a sound. Because if it makes a sound, it's like the grinding mill that had the water gushing through it and, 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 and circling the, 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 the millstone. No, they didn't. They said that's not allowed. That's the exception because it makes noise. So for them, even if it's continuous, if it makes noise, you can't have that working. Because someone may not realize that you had it working from before and you may have, someone may think that you allowed the water to gush through on Shabbat. That's, of course, the malaha. If the water was blocked by some blockage before Shabbat, and now you wanted to grind the millstone to grind the wheat for you, and you remove the block and allow the water to gush uh, through and, 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 and work the mill, <laughs> you did that on Shabbat, that's malacha. That's direct malacha. It's as if you're grinding. So someone may hear the water gushing in your in your backyard with this millstone working, they may think you did it, you started on Shabbat. Even if it's continuous, if it makes a sound, they don't allow it. Well, the fact that we're keeping the modern dish, uh, uh, clothes, washing machine, washing machine? dryer, so it'll make noise, so presumably you can- Also true. You like could. A camera and you put it above. You could, but uh, firstly, you know, I think if you if you're nearby, it does make a still makes no, a sound. Mean, yeah, and they don't hear it at all yeah. in the house. Uh, okay, I'll say to make sure you don't hear and from outside. No it's, only, it's only you. It's only you and your kids. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Zero to the chapter is for you as well. It's not that you, that you may stumble and, and think that you turn on. It's it's. The to the Shabbat, the fact that Shabbat is being desecrated, the atmosphere of Shabbat is being desecrated. 
Um, it can be done, but also the post can try to limit the amount of I, machines. Ideally, also, laundry seems like a different right. Ideally, you shouldn't do it. Right. And Holomoid laundry is like one of the specific things you shouldn't this do. Shouldn't it seems do, like laundry is right. in a, I don't know, a higher category of malacha. Right. Because laundry was a tremendous year when the, when the halacha was written. The rabbis couldn't imagine putting in a little... Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. In the wildest dreams, they couldn't right. think about Mashiach before they could think about how many <laughs> right. now. Right. But, but nobody has the... The guts. Whatever, <laughs> yeah. Huh? I mean, yeah, sorry, I, I, I hear you. No, I hear you. Um, I'll tell you, in seldom cases where it's very, very, very necessary, let's say I have a soldier's son who's in the army. He comes home right before Shabbat, and he must leave right after Shabbat. That's the situation. So we allow the cycle to keep on running during Shabbat because of this idea that it really doesn't desecrate the Shabbat in any way, and not even the atmosphere, because we barely hear it today. In Hebrew, yeah, Av Shamilta, Aleph, Vav, Vav, Shin, Aleph. Av Sha, Milta, Mem, Yud, Lam, Etaf, Aleph. Milta is a thing, the Vav. Avsha is a sound. Yeah. Aleph. Aleph, Vav, Vav, Shin, Aleph. Avsha. Check it up, uh, Shabbos, Yud, Zayin, or 17. No, it's an Aramaic. Aramaic. Yeah. Avshamilta is an Aramaic concept. It's, it's similar to Zilut the Shabta also. The desecrating the holiness of Shabbat. And that's why today, electricity in general is taken more severe than it should be really uh, by posting. That we don't allow trade or abandon. That's all God all by electricity. We try to refrain even from something that should be permit, permissible on Shabbat, like trade or abandon. Like turning on a switch, bishinui, a light switch, which the light itself is an LED, which is rabbinically forbidden only. If it's not a filament bulb type bulb of the ancient ones, so it's all LEDs. And it's done bishinui, so you have double the rabbanan. mitzvah, let's say, if you have a blackout and uh, shortage and, and you want to turn on the uh, fuse, call it. The, the main switch, yeah, uh, of the house to turn to turn on the lights back on. If there's nothing that has filament wire in it, like a plata does, so if you have a plata there, in, uh, it's problematic. But let's say it's only the lights and the AC and things like that, which don't have any uh, burning element in them, a burning wire, filament by wire. So that's only rabbinically forbidden. And if you turn on with your elbow, it's a shinui. So it's trader abanan and come tzorah gadol. We don't want to stay pitch dark, pitch black Shabbat uh, evening, um, Friday night, as they call it, wrongfully, Shabbat <laughs> evening. Uh, so you don't want to stay in the dark, but yet posting don't allow you to do, to do such a thing. Even though, according to strict halacha, you should be allowed to. Trader or baron, come to our gadol, shin zayin siyifei. They go, only allow you if you call a goy. They only allow you to call a goy to do it for you. The reason is because, two reasons. One is because the Chazonish held in general that all electricity is the right, huh? no matter if there's a filament or not. Because the Chazonish held it's called building, bonnet, because you're building the circuit. When you turn on something, the circuit gets built. The Shomazaman totally disagreed with the Chazonish, and he had back and forth letters, even though Shomazaman was a very young lad at that point where the Chazonish was the God of the door. Uh, above and beyond everyone else. And yet, Shomu Zaman had the courage to uh, correspond back and forth with him uh, letters. We had the actual letters written on both sides. And maybe I'm biased, but Shomu Zaman's position is much, much more uh, sent, makes sense. I think the Chazanish was stubborn about it because of the second reason I'm going to give now. The second reason to post, so that's one reason. According to the Chazanish, even if it would be Shino, it's only one Darabana for all electrical appliances because they're all there right. So one Shino is one Darabana, and then one Darabana doesn't allow you even a sort of Gadol to do it. That's why we're careful to take him into consideration. And the other reason 
is exactly because of Zidut the Shabbat. It's that idea that if we allow you to do that, that's the end of Shabbos. People will turn on the computer like this and their phone like that, and they'll say it's it's very necessary. I had to find out what happened with the sports game. <laughs> it's because Nefes, I can't I can't withhold the whole Shabbat without knowing what happened to the sports team that I'm a fan of. So it's there are endless actions that can be done by using trader abar and cohen. So I got it. So therefore, the post scheme say. Don't touch electricity at all, even Bishinu. Even Bishinu, don't touch it. And I think that was the Chazanish's, that's amazing about the Chazanish. You can, I think his foresight, foresight, back in the days, he, he died in 1952. So it was before electricity was so, so common and strong with using so many things. But he knew what's coming. He knew the, what's developing. And he said, if I don't make it a point to say that it's the right time, that, that could have been his point. He, deep, deep inside, he could have agreed to Shlomo Zaman that it really is not there, right? But he said, how do I keep it in control that people shouldn't uh, just do everything on Shabbat and make it like a weekday? Well, he said, I'll make up that it's still right. Huh? This is my understanding of the Chazanish. I'll make up it's still right huh? in order for not to go down a slippery slope. It's yeah. a slippery slope. So he wanted to stop it right there and then. And by the way, in modern days today, Osher Weiss, Osher Weiss is one of the greatest post today, living today in the Haredi world, and he's very well-known and accepted. He came out with a new psak regarding electricity, that it's Makeve Patish, the right. He calls it Makeve Patish. It's one of the 39 of Os Malacha. And again, by saying so, by defining electricity so, it doesn't matter if filament or not, then it knocks down the possibility of doing shinoi. Anything in shinoi, or by a kid, or by all, all that. And I think again, and again, if Shomu Zamen would have fought viciously against Maki Patish as well. We see his logic that Shomu Zamen speaks about knocks it down easily. It's not Maki Patish either. But again, I think Ramos Shavais is already living living the times that the Chazanish was afraid of. He's living them right now. And he's saying, if, we, if I don't come out with a Pesach that is the Oraita, it's, we're not going to be able to hold on to these restrictions that we made up by trade or abundant, not allowing this trade or abundant, because it's our because it's due to the Shabta. That doesn't, it's not effective enough. It won't hold people down from doing so. So he wants to make it the Oraita statement, the Oraita, so you won't touch this. So these are the ideas behind. No way. Shows. No way. If they do that, it's a terrible zero to the chapter. It's exact. You're right. Halakhically, strictly halakhically speaking, you can turn on your TVs by using a timer right. and your computer and everything. Watch whatever you'd like. <clears throat> but that's such a crazy zero to the chapter. That's what I said before. Even the timers... The post can restrict to only those instances and, 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 and machines and electricity that's very necessary for Shabbat and very common to use. That's why it's very difficult for the post scheme to let the dishwashers in by timer. Even that was very difficult for them to let that in. Slowly, they're letting in, letting in one by one. The very, like, for example, we have those blinds, Trisim, they go up and down automatically. He would put them on timers. I've seen one in a very religious home where suddenly the tree shit goes down. <laughs> and if you're on the wrong side, you're locked in. <laughs> you can't get out. So no, there's a door always. But uh, so, so this I, I've heard recently from Robert Field Malka. That this, is, this was also accepted. This is also let in, let in to use by, a time, by, by timers because it's so common now and uh, necessary for houses to function, so they let that in as well. <clears throat> but they barely let in machines, new machines into this leniency of using a timer, uh, even though according to Allah, there's no issue whatsoever. It's not even leniency, it's, it's totally kosher, it's modern kosher. But the Zinuta, the Shabta is what we're afraid of. Right. Right. 
Hold my air with the air roof works. If it works, then it works. Yeah. Right. That too was a tremendous struggle. Tremendous struggle in Manhattan and other places where many, many, I think today religious Jews don't count, don't rely on the air in Manhattan because of the halachic considerations there that make it problematic. Right. Right, because it all depends on how strong the people are <laughs> versus the rabbis. And uh, yeah, I guess it, it, it didn't turn into something so terrible. Absolutely, the Shabta by using an Arab. It, it helped much more than, the, than it worsened the situation. It helped the situation much families more. Can families can be together with the, with the whack, with the uh, kids, uh, Agalot, right, and all that. Okay, we'll stop at this. Went way over time. Have a great week, Shavuot Tov, and hopefully a better week than last week. Is that the same? Okay, call to Chodesh Tov and Barach, right? Tonight is Chodesh Shvat. Shemishma b'sarot tovot. Abbreviations of Shvat. Shemishma b'sarot tovot. Abbreviations of Shvat. Okay, call to. Bye bye. Amen. Okay, call to. Shukoyach, Shavuot Tov. Okay, to you, Shavuot Tov.